Hey guys, welcome to your first lesson of sixth grade math. So this is the first kind of like, besides the whole Football Friday thing we did, but this is the first lesson of your first unit that I'm going to teach. So I always like to start my school year out with a topic that you kind of already know a little bit of, about. So we're actually going to start with all operations with whole numbers and decimals. So the only operation that I do with whole numbers is just going to be division because you kind of need all of the other operations when you're doing long division. So we are going to start with long division. Um, but today we are just doing long division without remainders. So I know that everyone's first reaction to long division is just like buddies here, but it'll be okay. Um, how this is going to work is I am going to start with a warm up. Here are two problems. I want you to pause the video and I want you to try these on your own. After you're You've tried them on your own. You think you've got the answer. I want you to come back and then hit play, and then I will go through the problems for you. So this is this is a review. You should know how to do this already from last year, so I want you to try it on your own. So pause the video right now, and when you come back, I'll have the answers for you. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video. Um, if not, shame on you. You should pause it next time I tell you to pause it. So for long division... The first number is always the number that goes inside the division house. So I always write the first number first, draw the house around it, and then the second number comes on the outside. So what you want to do is, if you don't remember how to do long division, is you want to try to figure out how many times 5 goes into 625. In order to do that, we're going to start with the largest place value of the number inside. So we're going to cover up those two numbers. So we just want to figure out, does the 5 go into the 6? So it does go, 5 does go into 6, and it goes in once. So above that 6, we're going to put a 1, and then next we multiply. 1 times 5 is 5. 5 goes underneath the 6, and we subtract. 6 minus 5 is 1. So the next thing you want to do is you want to look at the next place value. So next we have a 2, and you want to bring it down. So then you want to ask yourself, does 5 go into 12? It does. It goes in twice. So 2 goes above the 2. So then 2 times 5 is 10. I'm going to subtract... 2 minus 0 is 2. 1 minus 1 is 0, so we're just not going to write it. And then we have one more number to look at. So 5 is the next place value, so we're going to bring it down. Does 5 go into 25? It does. It goes in 5 times, because 5 times 5 is 25. 25 minus 25 is 0, so your answer would be... 125. Okay. So same exact thing for the next one. So hopefully that kind of brought back some memories if you didn't remember how to do it. So 360 goes inside and 4 goes on the outside. So we're going to start with the greatest place value inside. Does 4 go into 3? Ooh, it does not. So some teachers I know had you write 0. Some teachers just had you write nothing there. I like to write something so it helps me keep my place values lined up. So I always like to put an X above a place value it does not go into. So I know not to put anything above that 3. So since it does not go into the 3... I'm going to slide it over, and then I'm going to look at the 36. So does 4 go into 36? It does. It goes in 9 times, because 9 times 4 is 36. So 36 minus 36 is 0. Then we're going to look next door to the next place value and I bring down a zero. So does four go into zero? 
it does not go into zero. So at this point, you have to put something above the zero in the quotient or in your answer. So since you need to put something up there and you don't really have like a number that's a 9x, we're not going to put an x there, that's where you would put a zero because you need a placeholder value there. So then zero times four is zero, subtract, and then you get zero. So then your answer would be 90 times. So 360 divided by 40, or by four, my bad, is 90. Okay, so hopefully that was a good little review. Those numbers in that division problem are not sixth grade numbers. You're gonna see when we get into it, they're gonna be a little bit bigger, but I'm gonna try to ease you into it. So if you did not copy down the notes as I was going through it, I want you to pause the video and stop now. How you copy down notes is going to be up to you. If you do it as I'm doing it, that's fine. If you would prefer to watch and listen and then hit pause and then copy it down, that's even better. It's kind of whatever you want to do. I would suggest you write down every single problem that I do. I'm doing this for you, so don't think you can just watch and let it soak in. You need to write it down. That's how you learn math, by doing it and writing it down. So I know I'm not there to see you writing it down, but that's where I just need to trust that you are writing it down. And it's up to you if you want to put the work in or not. So please put the work in, give me 100%, and make sure you are taking those notes for me. So like I said, we're dividing whole numbers today without remainders. We're going to touch on remainders tomorrow. So we're going to keep trucking with division problems. If you want to challenge yourself and try these on your own, go for it. But I'm going to run through a couple with you as they get a little bit larger. So the next one we're going to do is 864 divided by 24. So you'll notice that I am not using a calculator. And I don't want you to be using a calculator either. And the first example you may not have needed to or the warm-up you may not have needed to. But this one, as you can see, we're getting into larger numbers. You're going to be tempted to use your calculator, but I'm not going to allow you to use a calculator on the test. So I want you to try to refrain from that and you're going to have to do a lot of work on your paper. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in this one. So we're going to do 864 divided by 24. So we're gonna cover up the smaller place values and just leave the largest place value showing. So you have to ask yourself, does 24 go into eight? It does not. So I always put the X if it does not go in. And then we're gonna slide it over to show more place values. So does 24 go into 86? So what I mean by you're not allowed to use a calculator is you kind of have to guess and check. So I would do 24 times 2 to see what that would be. Because I don't know how many times 24 goes into 86. I have to figure that out. So 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 2 is 4. So 24 times 2 is 48. I can keep going to see if I can go higher. Because I want to go as high as I can without going over. 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So we're going to go up one more just to see, because that 72 is pretty close to 86, but we're going to go up one more to see if we can fit it in. 4 times 4 is 16, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 96. So no, it does not go in one more time, but I may use that information in the future, so that's good to know. So it will go in three times because three times 24 is 72. Now we're going to subtract. Six minus two is four. Eight minus seven is one. All right. So we're going to look at the next place value and bring it down. 144. Okay. So now I have to figure out how many times 24 goes in 144. I know that... 24 times 4 gets me 96, so that's getting closer. So let's try 24 times 5. 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 2 is 10. So 120. So I think I can go one more, so let's double check. 24 times 6. 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times 2 is 12. Plus 2 is 14. Oh, perfect. So 24 times 6 gets me 64. So 24 goes into 
144, my bad. Six times. Six times 24 is 144. Subtract and you get zero. So your answer would be 36. Okay, so if you notice the numbers are getting a little bit larger, so you are going to have to do kind of like your guess and check multiplication. You cannot use a calculator. Okay, you got to do it all by hand. And I know it takes a while per problem, but that's just something you're going to have to get used to because some math problems take a while, and that's okay. Okay, so we're going to do one more together, then I'm going to have you try one on your own and then give you the answer to see how, so you can gauge if you're getting this or not. So if you notice, the numbers are like super big right now. Um, so that's going to be the kind of numbers that we're working with in sixth grade. So I'm kind of, we're working up to it. So we're going to do this one together. I'm going to have you try a big one on your own. And then I'm going to give you some practice to do on your own. So first number goes inside. So 34,989. Oh, that got weird. Oh, jeez. 989. Divided by 321. Okay, so we're going to start with our largest place value. 321 does not go into 3. It does not go into 34. But it does go into 349. So this one should be a little easy. You should know that it only goes in once because that's really close. So we're going to put a 1 above the nine, and we're going to one times 321 is 321, and we'll subtract. Nine times, nine minus one is eight, four minus two is two, three minus three is zero, but we do not have to write it. So we're going to look at the next place value and bring down the eight. So does 321 go into 288? Ooh, it does not go into it. 288 is a smaller number. So what do we need to do here? So I always ask myself, can it go in? No. If it does not, it goes in zero times. So I have to put a zero above the eight because once I brought that down, it could not still go in. So then, since I put a zero up, I can look at the next place value and bring down the nine. And holy moly, that makes a huge number. So I have to figure out how many times 321 goes into 2,889. So we're just going to pick a number and we're going to multiply it by and see how it goes. So let's try 321 times, let's do seven, because we do have to get fairly large. So 7 times 1 is 7, 7 times 2, 14, 7 times 3 is 21, plus 1 is 22. Okay, so that, I got pretty high, but I still think I'm going to need to go a little higher. So let's try 8, 321 times 8, 8 times 1 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 3, 24, plus 1 is 25. Ooh, we still need to go pretty, a lot higher. So let's try one more. 321 times 9. 9 times 1 is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. 9 times 3 is 27. Plus one. Ooh, look at that. It's perfect. So 321 goes into 2,889, actually nine times. And then it ends up being nine times 321 is perfect. 2,889. We subtract, we get zero, and that's what we're looking for. So 109 would be your answer. Okay. Okay, so in your textbook so i want you to open up your textbook going to page 108 we just did number three together so you can fill in 109 there and what i want you to do right now you're going to pause the video and you're going to do four on your own 
okay? I want you to have paper out, pencil. Do not use a calculator. Do it all by hand. Try to divide 37,375 by 125, okay? So pause, try it. When you come back, I'll have the answer for you. Okay, so here is my work to that problem. So I got 587 as my quotient or my answer to the division problem. And I hope you got the same thing. If you did not pause the video, check out my work and see where yours differs from mine to see if you can find my mistake, your mistake and fix it, okay? Okay, so that is the lesson for the day. Hopefully it was somewhat of a little bit of a, a review with a little bit harder of a skill mixed in there. So for your independent practice, you are flipping to page 110 in your textbooks. You're only doing problems 2, 3, 5, 8, 9, and 12. Okay, I'm going to show you what they look like in a second. And then when you're finished, the answer key is on Google Classroom. Just because the answer key is there for you before you do the problems, don't be tempted. Don't look at it. I want you to do all of the problems in your notebook. And then once you are done all of them, then go back and check with the answer key. If you got any wrong, go back, try to fix them on your own first. If you can't figure out what you did wrong or you want to have me do it for you, you're more than welcome to email me. I can send you a picture of my work or we could do a Google Meet if it's before 11.30. You can jump on the Google Meet that I'm on every day at 11.30. So your homework is the 914 formative. So that's on the Google Classroom post as well. So you just have to click on the formative that says 914 homework. And those five questions are your homework. Remember, it's worth five points. If you do it, you get five points. It may be the one I'm grading for the week. So keep that in mind. Take it seriously. And then here is actually the problems you're doing for your homework. If you want to pause the video, find them in your book and circle them. It is page 110. Okay, so email me if you have any questions. Other than that, happy practicing long division and have a good day.